guys, welcome to Jack's Beautiful You. I am super excited for today's video because today we are gonna be talking about Chanel fragrances. So I have a little Chanel collection going on. I have my very favorite Chanel fragrances to share with you today. If you're interested in Chanel fragrances but you're not sure what Chanel fragrance might be right for you, then I am here to help. If you're new here, hi, my name is Jackie. I do mostly perfume, makeup, and beauty on this channel. If you are into that kind of content, I would love it if you would subscribe to my returning subscribers. Thank you guys so much. I really appreciate you guys. You guys are all so supportive and amazing. And thank you, thank you so much. If you are interested in seeing my Chanel collection and hearing about these beautiful fragrances, then just keep on watching. All right, if you've been watching my channel, you know I have been on quite the adventure with Chanel fragrances. I used to hate Chanel fragrances with a passion. <laughs> I used to think they were overrated. I used to think that they weren't worth the money. I used to think that they smelled vintage and old-fashioned and too strong and all kinds of stuff. I did not have a good opinion about Chanel perfumes. That was a few years ago and that was before I really started getting into perfumes as much as I am today. And even when I did start getting into fragrances, I would skip past the Chanel counter. I remember I'd go and I'd sniff around and I'd experiment with different fragrances and I would just completely avoid the Chanel counter because I had it in my head that I do not like Chanel perfumes. One day I decided to give them a shot and everything changed. I loved what I was smelling. I started sniffing all different kinds of Chanel perfumes and absolutely fell in love with a bunch of them. So I have in front of me seven fragrances from Chanel that I absolutely love and that I highly recommend to you. These are all more of the mainstream Chanel fragrances. I don't have any from the exclusive line. They're more upscale, more expensive line that they have. I do want to dip my toes into those fragrances. I am interested in those. Let me know in the comment section if you have any from the more upscale exclusive line from Chanel that you recommend. I should try. I'm really excited to start experimenting with those fragrances, but today we're just going to talk about my favorite, more mainstream Chanel ones, the ones that you can find at Sephora, Ulta, Macy's, things like that. I have one perfume that I don't own that I want to talk to you about real quick, so let's talk about that one first. So I'll put a picture on the screen. I'm talking about Coco Noir, and I really, really wanted to own Coco Noir. I thought I loved this fragrance, which is funny because a couple of years ago, Ago when I smelled it in store, I absolutely hated it. I thought it was awful. I just was not ready for it. I think <laughs> my tastes have changed and things that I like now, I never would have believed I would have liked a few years ago, but I absolutely loved it. So I got a sample of Coco Noir and I was so close to buying it. I mean, I was just in love with the way that it smells. It is absolutely beautiful. I love the bottle, that black, sleek, beautiful bottle. And it's just this warm, spicy, slightly woody, ambery, little black dress type of fragrance. You know, that one that you would wear on a sexy hot date night if you're wearing your little black dress and you just want to feel like a sexy powerhouse of a woman. That's what that fragrance smells like to me and I love it. However, my issue with Coco Noir is the performance. Does anybody else struggle with the performance on this perfume? Because I cannot get this thing to perform on me. I mean, literally within two hours, it was completely gone and I had a pretty large sample of it, so I got to wear it a few times and every time I wore it, it just, it just didn't perform. I had to literally bring my hand and my wrist up to my nose in order to smell the fragrance. It had no projection and it did not last. So let me know in the comment section if that's your experience because you know, sometimes samples can be tricky. Maybe I didn't have a great sample. I'm not sure. Let me know your thoughts about that in the comment section. I really love Coco Noir, but the performance was absolutely terrible on me. So for now it's a no, but let me know if you've had a different experience. Okay, so let's get into the seven perfumes that I do own and all seven of the ones I'm gonna talk about today that I actually own have great performance on me, absolutely no issues at all, and I highly recommend all seven of these perfumes. I am not going to rank these because that is too much for me and I really truly love each and every one of these fragrances for their own 
reason. So let's get into the first one. So this is actually the newest one to my collection. I haven't actually hauled this for you guys yet. I'm about to do a haul video. I have a lot of new perfumes I've added into my collection and this is one of them. This is the Chanel Chance Eau de Parfum and this is absolutely gorgeous. So this is the EDP version. The EDT is really pretty too and they do smell pretty similar but I prefer the EDP. That's usually the case for me. I usually do prefer the Eau de Parfum over the Eau de Toilette version of most perfumes. That's a general statement. That's not always the case but usually I find myself preferring EDPs over EDTs. This is a grown woman, classy, sophisticated, I mean business, I'm a CEO of a company but I'm really sexy too. <laughs> type of fragrance. This has excellent performance. This lasts all day on me and I have the most gorgeous sillage. I truly enjoy this one. It makes me feel like a million bucks every time I wear it. There's pink pepper in the opening which gives it a little bit of a spicy kick and then you've got jasmine and iris in the middle. The jasmine is this just beautiful sexy smooth jasmine. It's not overly heady to my nose and the iris just kind of gives it a little bit of a powdery touch and then you have this beautiful patchouli and musk in the base. There's vanilla in here as well. It's, it's so pretty. It's a little bit sweet but not too sweet and the patchouli that's in here you guys is just gorgeous. If you've been watching my channel you know I'm a huge huge fan of patchouli but it has to be done a certain way. It has to be that clean, warm, beautiful patchouli that gives a fragrance depth and character and just this warmth that I feel like Chanel just does so well. The DNA of Chanel fragrances is just it screams elegance to me and I, j I just love this perfume. So if you're looking for a very grown woman, classy, sophisticated, a little bit sexy with that jasmine, a little bit musky, actually it's a lot musky. This is definitely a musky, a musky, patchouli, powdery type of scent with some white florals, with the jasmine. Absolutely beautiful. This is a 10 out of 10 fragrance for me and I highly, highly recommend it. Okay, up next from the Chance line, we have Chance Ofreish. Now this one is an Eau de Toilette and I don't think they have an EDP of this particular flanker. I think it's just the EDT. However, that is just fine with me because this performs. This is absolutely stunning and this is one of the only freshies that I truly love in my collection. This is also a compliment getter. I don't know what it is about this fragrance, but every single time I wear it, I get a compliment on this perfume. It is really, really pretty. It is perfect for hot weather. If you're in the middle of summer right now and you've got some hot weather going on, I highly recommend this one. It is very refreshing. I say it every time I talk about this fragrance, but it's true. This is the freshie for people who don't like freshies. This has lemon and citron in the opening, but to my nose, it doesn't smell over the top citrusy. It doesn't smell too lemony, but you do get that lemon. There's also cedar in the opening, which I think is one of the things that helps it to not feel over the top lemon because sometimes really really citrusy fragrances come across on me like like bathroom cleaner or some sort of cleaner you know this does not smell like that at all this is very well done you've got pink pepper and jasmine in here patchouli and musk there's iris vetiver there's a lot of notes in the base this lasts all day long and it gives off the best little sillage. If you're someone like me and you don't really care for freshies all that much, give this one a try. This has patchouli in the base, it gives it a warmth, and it gives it a character and a depth to the fragrance that I've never really smelled in any other freshy perfume, and this is just beautiful. Up next, we have Chance Autund, which I found out I've been saying wrong this entire time. I've been calling it Autundra, but really it's just Autund. I and at least that's what Google Translate told me <laughs> because I've heard some people talking about this fragrance and some people were saying Chance Otund and some people were saying Chance Otundra and I was like, oh my gosh, how do you say that? So I looked it up. According to Google Translate, it's Chance Otund. This is the Eau de Parfum version. I have tried the EDT. I prefer the EDP. The EDT is really nice. The EDT is more of a fresh fragrance though. It's more fruity and fresh, 
where the EDP is more on the floral side. So this is an incredibly feminine, girly, yet incredibly classy. So when I say girly, I don't mean like girly in a juvenile kind of way. I just mean very, very feminine. There's quince and grapefruit in the opening. So you do get a little bit of a citrusy touch in the opening. And then you also have rose and jasmine and the rose and jasmine in here is just so feminine and so good. I love it. The rose is pretty prominent in here. Yeah, and it almost kind of smells like a really expensive shampoo. This smells citrusy. It smells musky. That musk in here is very strong. There's musk in the base. That's basically the base right there is just this beautiful white musk, and it gives it this like fresh and clean kind of feel. It makes me feel like I just washed my hair with an incredibly expensive shampoo. It has amazing performance on me. I have heard the EDT does not perform very well. I don't know that for sure. I've only tried it a couple of times and I didn't really test out the longevity of it, but the EDP performs on me really, really well. I don't know that that's the case for everybody. I've heard both with the EDP. I've heard some people say it's a really great performing perfume and some people say that it's not. So I don't really know about other people's experience. I can only tell you mine. My experience with the EDP is that it lasts all day long and it has a very beautiful scent bubble around me all day. I find it to be one of the easiest perfumes to wear. I could wear this every single day. I could wear this for any occasion. It would be appropriate any time of year. I feel like this would just perform really great anytime, any place. It's very simple. I have heard people say that they think that this is boring, and I see that. I see what they're saying. There's nothing complex about this fragrance. It's not complex at all. It's very simple. It's grapefruit, rose, and musk. You know, it's really not all that complicated, but for some reason, I just find it to be one of the most feminine and elegant perfumes. This is a pretty girl perfume. If you want to smell like you are pretty, <laughs> you're just a pretty, pretty girl, this is the fragrance. All right, up next, let's talk about a fragrance I think is absolutely perfect and beautiful for the summertime, and this is Gabrielle Essence Eau de Parfum. This is not a monster of a perfume. This isn't like a beast of a perfume. I'd say it's moderate. It's not weak and it's not strong. It's just kind of moderate. It's very beautiful. I don't have any problems with it though. It lasts for a good amount of time. I can usually get pretty much a full day's worth of this. I wore it to work the other day and it lasted me through my entire shift and it just had this beautiful little sillage around me, not too overpowering. It was definitely there. It was present. It wasn't really strong projecting, but it was definitely present. I find this one to be just so feminine and beautiful. This has a little bit of a tropical twist, so this is slightly citrusy. It's got some white florals. It also has some yellow florals, and it also has a little bit of coconut in here, although I wouldn't say this is an overly coconut fragrance at all, but it does give it a slight tropical feel. There's ylang ylang in here, and with that coconut, you kind of get a little tiny touch of a tropical vibe with this fragrance, and I find it to be one of the most beautiful perfumes I have for summertime. I really enjoy this one. I think if you're looking for a summer fragrance that's not overly coconut, you want just a tiny twist of a tropical, but you don't want it to smell like sunscreen or suntan lotion, you're not looking for that kind of vibe, not overly beachy, you just want an elegant, good performing, classy summertime fragrance with a tiny tropical twist, this is beautiful. There's also musk, vanilla, and sandalwood in the base, which I find to be some of my favorite base notes of all time. This one I don't hear a ton of people talk about, and I'm not sure why, but I don't think as many people are wearing this one as like perhaps some of the chance ones, if that makes sense, or like Coco Mademoiselle. Um, so if you're looking for a Chanel fragrance that not everybody else has, this is a good option if you like citrusy, white floral, tropical, musky, classy, and sophisticated perfumes. I just love this one. All right, this next perfume I was absolutely shocked that I liked. I was shocked. I had zero expectation to like this fragrance. I just tested it out almost as a joke 
thinking I was not going to like it. This perfume came out in 1984 and I I just didn't think I was going to like it. This is the original Coco Eau de Parfum. This is beautiful. Absolutely stunning. Yes, it kind of has a vintagey feel to it. It does kind of have like an 80s vibe, I'm not going to lie. I don't even care though because I love it. I love the 80s. Like the 80s are great. You know what's really reminding me of the 80s these days is Stranger Things. Does anybody else watch that show because I'm obsessed with Stranger Things. That TV show is amazing. And the last season, oh my gosh. And can I just say something real quick? Why didn't they release the entire season? Like we waited three years for season four. They didn't even release the entire season. <laughs> I was really kind of irritated about that. I cannot wait to watch the finale of season four. I think it comes out in July. But anyway, back to this perfume. This is definitely an 80s touch type of fragrance, but it is absolutely stunning. And this is the way that perfumes used to be made. You know, like back when you didn't have to overspray because perfumes were strong. <laughs> and this is definitely a strong perfume, but it's not Chanel number no. five. Okay. It's not, it's not that vintage. It's more modern than Chanel number no. five. I, I appreciate Chanel number no. five. Don't get me wrong. I appreciate it for what it is. I really do. I just don't want to wear it because it does smell a bit too soapy, a bit too vintage, a bit too old fashioned for me. But this one is absolutely stunning. This is ambery. It's warm and spicy. It's a little touch sweet. It's a little touch powdery. This is not like a sexy fragrance in my opinion. This is definitely a very sophisticated woman who definitely has her life together. This one has a lot of different notes in it, so I'll just put it up on the screen. I'm not gonna go over all the notes, but there's cloves in here, kind of like in Coco Noir. I love that. I love that clove touch to these perfumes. It just adds this kind of warm, spicy touch to the fragrance that I find to be really enjoyable. I really like that. And then there's some rose in here. There's mimosa in here. There's peach in the opening, which I love. This is a strong fragrance. This isn't one that I've had a whole lot of chances to wear because I got this when the weather was turning warm and I can't wear this in the warm weather. This is strong. It's pretty heavy. It feels like a fall and winter fragrance for sure, but I will definitely be wearing this when fall comes because I just think it smells so sophisticated, way more sophisticated than I really am. <laughs> way more, way more sophisticated than I really am, but man, if I'm just in the mood to feel like I have everything together and my makeup and hair is always in place and I wanna pretend like I know it's in style because I never do, absolutely beautiful. A little vintagey, but not in a bad way. I'm going to say in the best possible way, which I hate to say. Every time I think of that, I think of Maria Colette's video where she makes fun of influencers for our crazy, the crazy things we do and say. But this smells vintagey in the best possible way. <laughs> And of course, would this even be a Chanel video if I didn't talk about the classic, the iconic Coco Mademoiselle? I love this perfume. This never gets old. This is classy, sophisticated. There, I'm going to sound like a broken record because all of these are classy, sophisticated, elegant, grown woman scents. And this is definitely the iconic fragrance for class and sophistication. This is beautiful. This is addicting and very recognizable. So I know, and I'm sure you know, when somebody has Coco Mademoiselle on, it is very recognizable. I smell it on other people. I've smelled it on other people before, which is kind of a, interesting because I don't really smell even like super popular fragrances, I don't always really smell them on people. It's not like I go out in my life and I'm like, oh, there's that popular fragrance. I don't know, maybe I just don't go out that much. <laughs> maybe I'm just not around that many people. But this is one I have smelled on other people a few times. So I know it's very popular. I know a lot of people have it. I know that it's not necessarily the most unique the, the fragrance is unique, but it's not the most unique smell because a lot of people are wearing it. 
Personally, I do not care about that. I don't care if I smell like everybody else as long as I love the perfume. I don't know why. That can be important to you. That's your that's your business. You know what I mean? What Your perfume journey and what makes you love perfumes is your business. And if you want to smell unique and you don't want to smell like everybody else, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. But for some reason, I just don't care. <laughs> For some reason, I don't care if I smell like everybody else, and I love Coco Mademoiselle. So if you're someone who just wants a perfume that smells incredible, that is a beast of a perfume, this is beast mode. There's no getting around it. This is beast mode. It will last you for sure all day, and it will fill up a room. So you have to be careful. You don't want to overspray it. But if you don't care that a lot of people own this perfume and you just want to smell super sophisticated and classy and iconic, then this is the fragrance. I love this one. I always have a bottle of this in my collection. This is definitely one of my top, top fragrances and I highly recommend. Now the original Coco Mademoiselle is the one that I wear more in the spring and summer. It's a little bit more citrusy in the opening. You've got some orange notes. You've got some bergamot. There's orange blossom in here. And there's definitely, there's definitely patchouli in here. There's definitely some vanilla in here. So this one I find to be a little bit more citrusy than the intense version, which is the other one I want to talk about. My favorite Coco Mademoiselle is the intense version. I love the intense version. I love both of these, but this one's more of my fall winter Coco Mademoiselle, but I do prefer this one. And the reason why is because it's a little deeper, it's a little sexier, a little darker than the original Coco Mademoiselle. This one has a lot more patchouli and a lot more vanilla in the base, and it's a little bit heavier, which is why I do prefer it in the fall and winter. It is, again, beast mode. I wouldn't say that the performance is any better than the original. The performance on both of these is fantastic, but this is more intense in the sense that it is deeper, a little bit darker, just more patchouli and more vanilla, and it's not as citrusy in the opening as the original. It definitely does have citrus in the opening. There's lemon, there's bergamot, there's orange in here. It's not quite as bright somehow in the opening. I don't think it's redundant to have both, personally, because like I said, I think that the original is really, really great in the spring and summer, and this one's really, really great in the fall and winter. So I have a Coco Mademoiselle all year round, and so for me, I don't think it's redundant, but you might want to get your nose on them because they do they do smell similar. I mean, they do smell similar. So if you don't want two Coco Mademoiselles, you might just want to get the one that's right for you. But I personally am very happy to have both in my collection. All right, guys, that is it for today's video. Those are the Chanel fragrances that I have in my collection. And don't forget to leave in the comment section your recommendations for more Chanel fragrances that I might have missed from even the mainstream. If you have some mainstream Chanel fragrances you think that I would love or definitely let me know about the more exclusive line from Chanel since I'm about to start exploring that little world. Let me know what your recommendations are. I love to hear from you guys. Thank you for watching. If you did like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I hope everybody's having an amazing day and I will see you in my next video. Bye.